Welcome to Wire Girls. This tutorial I called a crisscross pendant and it's a really really good one for using particularly unusual shaped stones. Now I've done two versions for your table cut. One's got a Labrador eye twin and one's got a blob of glass. So materials you're going to need, you're going to need your focal stone. You're going to need 0.8mm or 20 gauge round wire and you're going to need approximately three to four times the circumference of the stone. And then you're going to need some 0.4 or 26 gauge round wire for the weaving that we're going to do on the back to create the frame. Now, I want to show you two of those, not because it's really any different to do both, but just to give you an idea of different heights of stones and how you treat them slightly differently. The frame is exactly the same in both cases. So I'm going to start working with this uh, rather pretty piece of Labradorite and I've measured round and it's about three to three and a quarter inches. So I've cut myself four pieces of wire. One's about an inch longer than the others and the other three are about 12 inches long. So three 12 inches and one 13. And then taking the end of my finer wire, my 9.4 or 26 gauge, starting at the front, grip on and wrapping away from myself. I'm going to put three or four wraps on. This is going to anchor the wire so that it doesn't move. And if you like, this is our casting on edge. Now I'm going to take my other three wires and bring them in. So this longer wire is the first wire I'm using and it is at the bottom. Now what I'm going to do with this weave is I am now going to wrap this over the first wire and the second, round the second, over the second and third, round the third, over the third and fourth, and round the fourth. It's a weave that I'm very fond of. I do like to use this and it's, um, I believe it's called a sumac weave, but it may be slightly modified by me. I'm not exactly sure. So what I'm going to do is when I find a pen, because I have one kicking around, or a pencil, I'm just going to... You can never find one when you want one, can you? They're never just where you left them. There we go. So I'll do you the four lines. So we've got... Now the pen's not working. <laughs> okay. One, two, three, four, four. And I have wrapped around the wire three or four times to get me started. So that's that little cast on bit there. And then I'm going to come out from the bottom and I'm going to go over the bottom wire and the next wire. And I'm going around that second one, over to the third, around the third and up and over the fourth and around. Now normally what I'd do is when I've done this, going roundy, roundy, roundies like this in the past, is I've got you to turn the whole thing over and start exactly the same from the back so that you're working the same stitch on the back and the same stitch on the front, which gives you a slightly different stitch. With this, it's a little bit awkward. So I'm going to work constantly from the front instead of turning it over. So I'm going to come down and I'm going between the second wire and the third wire. And then I'm going to wrap up and over that third one. And then I'm going to come down and go between the first and the second and wrap over the second. Then I'm going to come down and around the first one and wrap around the first. So I have a little um, triangular shape. Now, when I've used this weave in the past, particularly for bracelets and things like that, I've squidged all this weave up so it's tight together. In this particular design, we want it to be like a zigzag stitch on a, a, like on a sewing machine, that sort of thing. So I've taken my wires and I'm pulling them all the way through. Normally, I would work from the right hand side of the wires. Then I don't have as much wire to pull through. Unfortunately, on this design, we can't do that because we, well, you'll see in a minute. So I've left myself 
about three, three and a half inches of wire that aren't woven at this end. Can you see that there? Three inches or so. And that's going to create our bales. So I've done the first little triangle and to go up and down, like I say, like a zigzag stitch. And our longer wire is the bottom wire, wire number one. So I'm going to go back up again. So I'm going over wire one and two. Now this, this is particularly ham fisted for me at the moment because with all these wires and having to work from the end and working with my hands out forwards and underneath the camera, it's a little bit difficult. So if I'm a little bit slow or hesitant or I get my wire in the wrong places, you know why. Let's just go around the top one. So I've done another row up, exactly like the first ones. Now then, let's just take, sorry, like I said, it's not the easiest thing. I'm taking the bottom wire now and I'm pulling it down. So my weaving's gone to the top. I've taken my bottom frame wire, I've pulled it down. I'm going to put the tip of my round nose pliers in there and grip. And then bend my thicker wire. Whoops, sorry, I've got the start of the weaving wire in. Bend that up. Can you see that? Sorry, let me just grip again. Now I'm gripping now and I'm bending the wire back. I will get that back into shot. I am sorry, there you go. So you can see what I've created is like a little blob on the bottom of the wire. And now I am going to bring my weaving wire back down because we've got this zigzag shape. It will come down and meet in the right spot. So, and two. So I've gone between two and three, wrapped around three. Gone between one and two, wrapped around two. And now I'm going to go to the bottom one, wrap around, would help if I got in the right spot, go in there, wrap around the bottom wire, and round so it's pointing up. Now I'm going to go around two, so between two and three, wrap around two, between three and four, wrap around three, over the top, wrap around. You'll soon get into the flow of the weave and it grows quite quickly because we're doing this wide zigzag. We are compressing these stitches. When you compress them, they look a little bit like knitting, but we're not doing that. So I've gone back up to the top again and now I'm going to come back down. Sort of the, I can't get this comfy at all. <laughs> so and round we go and in between those two you see how much easier it is oh not particularly easier but when you've got so used to working with short ends of wire and suddenly because I'm putting these indentations these blobs on the bottom I can't slide the wire up because I can't slide the wire up I have to work where I actually want the weaving to be rather than where I'm going to maneuver it to in the future. So that's another zigzag. I've gone up to the top and come back down. So let me go back up again. <laughs> I'm sure you won't have anywhere near as much trouble as I'm having with these wires. Here we go. I mean, we're only working over four wires. Honestly, this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you again this little, that's gone through the wrong one. And then I'm going to move the whole thing into my lap so that I can actually see what I'm doing. And I will get the rest of them finished. Come here. Never behaves when you want it to behave. There we go, around the top one.
Let's see if I can get everything out of the way. That will make it a little bit better. <laughs> right, we're at the top. Yay! So taking that bottom wire again, just straighten those. Taking that bottom wire and pull down. Take my round nose pliers, go in with the tip, grip, bend it back, turn the round nose pliers, so that we're holding it, and we've made another little dimple. Now I'm going to come back down by going round the third and fourth wire. <laughs> In between the second and third, that's it. Wrap around the third. Oh, come on! It really does not want to play. That's it. Wrap around the third. In between. Did I go in the right place, sir? No, I haven't gone around the top one properly. Oh, I am sorry. But you see, even after years and years and years in practice, you can put yourself into a not too comfortable position, which is the way I am at the moment. I also have new glasses. That may not be helping either. Let's get that round there. And round. Come here, second wire. Around that one. Around the one at the bottom. All the way around. That's it. Bring it around again. And there, you see, I've got two little blobbles. Now, I'm going to take this away and I'm going to pop it on my lap. <laughs> to do the rest. So that I have little blobs going all the way along. And I'm going to do it until I get to the circumference of my stone. So my stone was, what, about three, three and a half inches long. And that's how much I've made so much easier when I could see it properly. And it wasn't between a table and a camera and totally out of view. Right then. So we have this piece of wire all wound with our little blibbles on. We have a piece that's unwound beside. Now I need this fine wire at the top. Uh, the reason I need it at the top is for doing the bales because when I'm going to bring these wires up and together these are going to be the bits that are touching and I want to join the bales so I'm just going to weave it back up again so that my wire is at the top so the same weave I've gone over the first and second wire round the second over the second and third, around the third, over the third and fourth, and around the fourth. And then I will leave that wire there at the top so it's ready for me to use on the bale. Now then, let's get this into the shape of our stone. I start by just manipulating the wire gently, bringing the wires further and further up. I tend to do this by eye. If you find it easier, you can put the stone over the top of it, work it like that. You can draw around the stone and work to the drawing that you've got on your paper that you're working on. But I can do it like this, just a little movement at a time. There we go, come on, together. And you can see how the weaving's gone together at the same line at the top. Let's have a look at that. There we go. That is a little bit down at one side. Let me just give that a wriggle. I've pushed those down slightly so that they're parallel to the ones that are on the other side. Grip and bend so that these wires come apart. Then when we push it together, you see, they sit parallel. Otherwise, they just cross over each other and we don't want that. Now, two wires out and two wires from this side. Come here. Out. So I'm left with a pair of two wires. So four wires, but 
two wires of two and I'm all I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap around those two wires and again wrapping around the two wires splay them out slightly so you've got a nice gentle v-shape and come around the other two each one I'm wrapping around twice going through the middle and then wrap up around the other so it's like a figure of eight so a one and another one two down through the middle and then wrapping up and around once pushing them down twice you see how i use my index finger and my thumb to make sure those wires are pushed back and down all the time now i've just speeded this piece of film up because i'm just doing the same motions other than occasionally using my pliers to make sure that those wires are pushed in nice and neat so twice on one side figure of eight to the other and wrap around i love this bale it makes a really really nice bale i like it better than sort of under and over all four wires which can look a little bit bitty and it's harder to get neat whereas this one is super easy to get it looking neat and it's it's one of the thing about weaving that people will look straight at to see how neat the bale is so this is a nice easy one okay so i'm going to bring these wires back in now so that i'm working on like a diamond shape um i haven't particularly measured this um i've just gone by eye i want the bale to be about that long so this is the point where i'll bring the wires back in now let me just grip where they're going to touch and bend them out again and i know where i'm working to also means I can get the wire in between a lot easier. So I've got this diamond shape. Now, because I'm on a decreasing side of a triangle, if you like, rather than the increasing, the wire wants to slip an awful lot more and move. So each time you have to be careful to push it back. I'm also using the my fingernails and my thumbnails and the pads of my fingers to hold the wire in place each time I go around. It takes a little bit more time than doing it on the increase, but it's definitely worth it. So again, just speeded this up. Use your pliers if you're not comfortable using your fingers, but do make sure that every single time you go around, your wires are in position. Make sure that everything is nice and neat, just as nice as you'd like it to be. Unfortunately, if you don't do it every time on every wrap, you will end up with holes in your weaving. So make sure that each time you've gone round, you wrap round twice, push it down. Go to the other side, push it down. Lots and lots. Like I said, I'm using my finger and my fingernail to hold those wires in place each time. Let's have a look. That'll do. It's near enough. I probably gave myself a little bit too much wire at the top there, but it doesn't matter. Right, we don't need to do anything with this yet, so I'm just going to open those wires out and it will make the weaving wire stay in place. I'm going to put my stone on there. There we go. Now, you may have wondered why we made all these little blobs around the edge of our frame. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to use those little blobs as areas that we can stitch through. And not with the fine wire, but with the thicker wire. I've just detached myself from the coil of fine wire because uh, otherwise I'd have got fastened up. So put my very pretty Labradorite stone on the top. Take the top wire, lay it over the top corner, and I am going to go through the first little blibble and go through now making sure my stones in place I can they're quite slippy a labradorite I can bring that down not too tight you don't want it to pop past and underneath the stone you want it to sort of catch that front edge of your stone taking the wire from the other side I expect I expect 
Heck, it'd help if I could talk, wouldn't it? The stones drop off, but that's all right. And I'm going to go through that first blibble again on the other side and bring that down. Push it into the right place so it balances with the other one. Right. So now I can take the next wire. Now, I could go through this side and you could create let me just show you this I'm not going to do this I'm just showing you I could create loops along the side like this which would to a certain degree hold the stone in especially if you went down and across the bottom so it's something that you can look at doing particularly if you have something like a cameo that you don't want too much over the face of but in this case I'm just going to come here go to the second loop on the other side of the stone and wrap that in and down. Once you have these loops, it's so easy to use them for so many things. So I've taken the wire from the other side and I'm going into the second loop. Come here. You get a nice little crisscross pattern at the top. Now I'm bending these up. You see? up against the top of that loop and that one that will hold them in place while I'm doing the next bit so if you wanted to go down the sides at this point and then round the bottom so it's not too obvious so down there and pull that tight now up and round can you see this little curl that I'm putting in there that will anchor it into place. I'm taking the next wire. And I'm going to pop that into the next loop and pull that down. Like I said, not super tight. And then bend that up and against itself and make it into a loop. Now then let's have a look at the other side. So loops, get back under there, it's just be naughty. You will always find that with any sort of working that you're doing, you need to reposition your stone quite regularly. There's nothing wrong with that, you haven't done anything wrong, it's just the nature of what we're doing, that things will slip and move. So I'm just going hand over hand with my wire. Now, you'll see that I've got this one longer wire. That's the one that we did longer right at the beginning. And the others are probably a little bit short, but I think I've got enough. So I'm just going through and wrapping around. Now then, are these long enough to go anywhere? Normally, you see, this one, would be going in that hole. Is there enough to go in there? Yeah, just. So I'm going to wrap that round as if it was in its loop. The other one's not going to go anywhere. There, there isn't enough wire there for it to go anywhere, but don't worry about that. It's not a, um, it's not a problem. I just want some pliers. I'm just going to curl that a little further so it's in its loop trim it and then I can just make that touch the other wire so it's not going to come out because it's looped around so then I can try with the other wire pop that one to there that's cradling the uh, bottom of the stone beautifully is that then this one I don't think that needs to go anywhere I don't think it's long enough to go anywhere anyway so let me just have a quick look no it's not going to go there so let me just trim that back just for argument's sake let's say that I didn't have sufficient wire to go across the bottom what I would just do is add another piece in and go through and loop onto two of the, uh, the little loops that we made in the frame. So I'm just going to bring this round 
and wrap around and trim that off. Close it up with my pliers. So we've actually got two in that hole now, but it doesn't matter. Round here, straight across the bottom into that second hole. You know, I probably could have left that one before off and not done it, but yeah, it would be all right. Let's just make sure that's sitting up so that the bottom of that stone's absolutely held in and bring that round. And I'm going to trim that off. We don't need any more. You could put more on if you wanted and you could have extra long wires and you could bring that round and wrap it and wrap it and wrap it. But... It's perfectly safe. It's not going anywhere, isn't that? It's actually back's really pretty as well. Looks like almost like a little bit of lace edged framework. So let's get these bales into place. I like my bales to come forward. I like the way it, the height is then at the front. So I've got these um, oval pliers, but if you haven't, Use a pencil, use a knitting needle, use your round nose pliers, anything that you can actually create the shape with. I'm taking the wires out to the side of that one and I'm going to tuck the bail in there at the top of the pendant. Now, can you see why I like it to come to the front rather than the back? If it goes to the front, everything's perfectly smooth at the back. Now, this is my weaving wire that we used for weaving our bale, and I am stitching the bale together. Can I just push it in a little further? Or is that it? And what I will do is I'll take this backwards and forwards. I'm going through the middle to tighten that up, and then I'm going round in the middle at the front go on doesn't want to go through if the end gets a bit chewed up it will always go through sometimes you need to trim the end of the wire off just to make it nice and smooth there we go so through the middle at the front that is catching the wires as we're looking at it now on the left together with the wires on the left at the back and now I'm, I've come around to the right and I'm going back through the middle again go on all this is doing is it's just holding that bale in place make sure that the front is fastened to the back now then what can I do with these wires hmm just trimming that off that's the start edge of the wire you know we originally cast it on when we we're creating the frame so I'll just trim that down you could do a design with these you could do some curls you could go backwards and forwards you could come down the side of the pendants you could go forwards with one from both sides and take them up the middle of your bale if your weaving's not quite as neat as you would like it to be on that bale by taking two of your smooth wires up over the center of the bale it completely disguises that um i'm just going to trim them off trim them off short and put a curl in each and it will just sit in the bottom there so i took one of the wires and i curled it upwards and I'm going to take the other wire and I'm going to curl that downwards nothing to catch it anywhere and it's completely out of the way just tuck that in at the side of the bale there's no sharp bits or anything there it's just gone so let's do the same with the other side sometimes if you've got a piece of wire left you almost feel obliged to use it even though you're extremely happy with the way your pendant's looking, it's like I've still got this bit of wire. So you do something on it with it, and then you're like, mm, do not be afraid to cut it off. You know, if you've done enough and you've got the pendant where you want it to be, 
chop the excess off. You can put it in a scrap pot. You can send it back to wherever you bought the wire from in the first place and they'll credit you. So don't, you know, don't worry about it. Now, let me just tuck that end in. Make sure they're neat. And then I'll just have the... Um, this work now is there somewhere I can wrap this around I prefer to wrap around just one wire so pull it through and tight can I get through again it's very very tight in here I haven't got a lot of room now do you remember what I said about you getting kinked up just chop the end off Let's go through again. Go on. Please? No. Nope. Must be somewhere I can wrap it around. We go through there. I'm actually going through the loop that I've just created. Just to give it um, a bit more of an anchor point. That'll do. Trim that off. And just smooth the wire over so that it's totally in place. And there you go. Now that will work on just about any shape that you've got. You've got a very pretty back. You've got these little loops. Your stones, very secure. Now what I want to show you is another one. I've got another one here that I've already made the frame for. And as you can see, it's quite a different shape because it's very rounded. And this is a piece of dichroate glass. Now I love dichroate glass. It's beautiful, but it's a pig to set because it's so slippery and when you get some stone like this that's fat it's harder to get your wires over so I've popped my first wire through the first loop just like I did with the labradorite and I'm bringing my wire from the other side and I'm just going to pop it through the loop on the frame come here but what I want you to see is the height that I'm leaving these wires. Can you see how high up this piece of glass they're going? They need to. If I pull these down quite low and tight, the glass would just slip out. Again, I'm popping the loop in. More necessary for this um, little blobby piece of glass than it was for the labradorite because it's allowing you to continue the idea <laughs> can't even hold the framework let alone the piece of glass go on it's allowing you to continue the height of the wire and for it to look nice and natural so there's my other one I've got a loose bit there smooth it over with your finger and bring that loop around Meaning that the wire is then sitting in the right place for it to come back up and around the stone. Let's go into that. Obviously, I have less loops because it's a smaller stone. But that doesn't really matter. So before we worked with sort of 12 or 13 inches of wire, I think I only worked with maybe 7 or 8 on this one. Now then, let's just pop you in that hole there. It's a little bit like leapfrogging, you know, like drafts or checkers. You're hopping over one and going into the next one. Now, a nice long wire there, so let's use you to come round and go into not the one next to it, but the one after it. Surprisingly, as soon as you get these side wires on, you start getting to this one at the bottom. 
everything starts to firm up. Now then, will you go in there? Will you reach? I think you might. Just let me just give you a shove. Remember, I can't pull too tight. If I pull too tight, the wire is going to slither down and underneath. So I want that it's just enough, as I said with the other one. If you find you don't have enough, get another piece of wire. Just attach it to one of the loops and you can hop around going in and out of the other loops until you've got your stone, or in this case, your piece of glass absolutely firm and anchored in. Would you go in there, please? It says, no, I really don't want to. Go on. There we are. Just need a little bit of help. And twist round. So we're just about in. Everything's covered. The a uh, piece of glass is not going anywhere. I could take that further up and round if I wanted to, but I don't think it's necessary. Let me start trimming some of these ends off and let's see where we are. So just the same as with the other one, trim off quite low down and then I can finish that circle off. There we go, same with the other side. By creating the loops in the framework, you give yourself ample room to pop these wires through. And you're taking these wires and anchoring the stone down onto that frame, really nice and strong. This will work with just about any shaped stone. I mean, you get some beautiful tumble stones, um, but they're a pick to set because they are completely organic in shape and lumpy and bumpy but this will enable you to do that you can even do um, longer straighter stones with it you know like um, crystal shards it goes very well with those now i'm just shoving the wires around to get them into place same thing with the bale same thing that i did with the other put the pliers on don't move the pliers move the wire it's, it's quite a neat trick is that if you move the pliers, you will grip where you are and, and bend away and you won't get the right lines. If you use your pliers as your stopping point and then bend the wires, it's much easier. So I could just wrap those two main wires around the back and that would hold everything in place. But I'll just stitch it in with the finer wire. Come here. Around. Stitch back through the middle. It just gives you little loops that hold everything in place. Now, where am I going to finish you off? So I'll cut these wires. Curl them both together. Gives you a slightly different look than I did on the silver one, but then again, you don't want too light, do you? Trim off. Flatten down that curl. Make sure it hasn't got any little sharp bits. And tuck it into the bottom of the bale. Same on the other side. the wires around together, trim off, and neatly tuck. Alright, so just move those in. Now then we find where does this need to go? I could go all the way around, but that might look a little messy. Let's just go through there again. It's really just finding somewhere to put them. Somewhere where it finishes off, where you can get it nice and tight. 
I have always been amazed at how little metal is actually needed to hold anything in place. But once or twice around, we'll make sure that that's nice and firm and anchored in. That's smoothed down. Let's move all my mess out of the way. There we go. I've got a piece of dichroic glass or a piece of labradorite or a piece of anything. And really versatile, cute setting. Of course, <laughs> I'm going to go and oxidise the copper one because I always do. And that's what it looks like when I oxidised it. And then we should have a nice photo of the silver one. So I can't wait to see what you make. Hopefully you'll post me some pictures so that I can see yours. Thank you very much for watching. Happy wrapping.